Live sound has always been about experience. The more gigs you get, the better you are, give or take. But can AI replace years of experience? We've had generative AI for a few years at this point, but I'm not seeing many people using it in live sound. Is that because it can't help us? Is it because we're afraid it will replace us? I mean, what happens if AI gets as good as us at mixing live sound? Will we still have jobs? And what about the people just beginning their careers now? Will AI let the beginners skip years of hard earned experience? Are they going to achieve in one year what took me three in the beginning? Now, relatively speaking, blindly trusting AI is a recipe for disaster. But writing off entirely is also pretty foolish in my opinion. I know you mean well, you just didn't think it through. So in this video, we'll take a look at when AI completely fails at live sound, how beginners are going to use it to get better faster, and the one important thing that us experienced engineers need to remember about AI. If you are a beginner, then you should probably start by learning the fundamentals and I have a free guide for you. It's three steps to perfect EQ and it just outlines my philosophy on EQ. You can grab that in the description down below. But let's dive in. So the first caveat is that AI for live sound is kind of problematic, right? Because AI is often confident, but the information it gives you is incomplete, right? It's confident, but flawed. Have you ever heard about a lie of omission, right? It's when you don't outrightly say anything wrong, but you also don't tell the whole truth. Picture this situation. You've had a gig. The manager comes up to you afterwards or the promoter or whoever and says, how is the gig? And you say, the audience loved it. What you don't say is, ah, sound check went really, really badly. There was loads of feedback uh, and the artist's really unhappy. You see, these are two different stories, right? And what the promoter, manager, venue person is trying to ascertain is, did everything go well? but you have only told them about the stuff that you think did go well. Live omission, right? Similarly, when you ask AI about live sound stuff, it can tell you stuff which is true, but it doesn't give you the context that you need to know to understand it. For example, AI tells you to always keep vocals on top, but I mean, that's not exactly true if you're working shoegaze or black metal or something. It also tells you that low stage volume leads to a better front of house mix. But again, that's not true if you've got a tiny PA and no subs, you need some of the power from the amplifiers, especially the bass amplifier, to fill the room up and give you low end. So that's reason one why it's not gonna replace experience. Reason two is that live sound is a people skill, right? It's like 90% people skills, 10% technical, and AI cannot do people skills. We get work most of the time through contacts, right? Through people we know and we like working with. I don't get asked to work because I'm technically fantastic. I get asked to work because people enjoy working with me. And the fact that I don't make a lot of mistakes anymore is a bonus. Just a quick announcement. I want to help you build your career in live sound. So I'm going to be shortly launching the Live Sound Career Accelerator. It's going to be a 12 week program where 10 people get to work closely with me. And we're going to work on getting your skills, your confidence and your connections built up to let you build the career that you want in live sound. If you're interested and you want to join the waitlist, you can fill out the form in the description below this video. I'll see you there. And the third reason it's not great for live sound is that sound is subjective and AI cannot be subjective. It can't actually tell you what you need to do to a sound source because only you can decide what needs to happen to that sound source. It's like learning a language, right? Like you can tell someone what 2.5 kilohertz sounds like, but they won't actually understand what it sounds like until they get an EQ and they cut it and boost it and listen to what happens. Similarly, AI might tell you, oh, to beat feedback, take out 2.5K, right? But that's, you know, it's half the information. How much 2.5K do you take out? Depends on the microphone, the singer, the PA, the room, the, all of this stuff. So real experience tells you in a nuanced way when to use your technical skills in a certain situation and when to stop. But let's not dismiss it entirely, right? Because AI is going to allow the beginners in the industry now to progress much faster than the experienced people before them, right? Now, inexperienced techs still need to learn the basics, right? They still need to learn how to gather information using their senses and assess its usefulness. One of the big skills that inexperienced techs need to learn is how to read a manual. They need to learn that all of the information is documented there somewhere. And if you can acquire the information from a manual, it's gonna save you so much time. Using AI in this context can help you navigate the manual. Some of these manuals are hundreds of pages long and different manufacturers use different terminology for different concepts. Like routing might be patching, it might be IO, it might be ins and outs. You can ask AI what to look for in the manual and it might nudge you in the right direction and get you going a bit quicker. The second thing AI can help with is reading books. So I got some books, let me grab one. 
this book here, Live Sound Operator's Handbook, third edition. It's really useful, got loads of great information, but there is tons of information in there. And if you're a beginner, it can seem overwhelming. Bob McCarthy's book, Sound System Optimization, tons of information, but really overwhelming. Sentences and paragraphs in the book might not make sense to a beginner, but they can now take AI and ask it to clarify in simple words what is being said in the book. So they are inputting the correct information so AI can't deny it or change it. It can just explain the concept a little simpler. So that's gonna get them going faster. They don't need a college professor or an experienced tech to explain the concepts that they read in the book anymore. The third way it's gonna help them is with presets, right? And one of the cool things it does is it creates presets on EQ and compression and gating based off of what the channel hears coming in the microphone. If you're a beginner, then a compressor might overwhelm you. You might not really understand how to set, attack, release, the knee control, the ratio, all that stuff. But if your choice is reduced to something really binary, like do I turn the compressor on or off? Or do I turn the threshold up or down? It makes it quicker for someone to navigate it. And they can start using these tools with less of a risk of destroying a mix because they have an AI helper. They're still the one deciding when to use it and how much, but someone is nudging them in the right direction. If you're enjoying this video so far, I'd love it if you could subscribe to the channel. I've got loads of other videos where I philosophize about live sound and our lived experience, and you can come and share my woes sometimes. Back to the video. My third and final big point here is that AI is definitely not going to replace experienced techs, right? We have too much broad experience and context for the industry. However, if you are thinking AI is gonna take your job, it won't take your job, but someone who is very, very competent and very competent at using AI to get the most out of their live sound work may take your job. Or they won't take it exactly, but they're going to be more employable as the industry goes forward. We're in a tech forward industry. Although it's 90% people skills, we are interfacing with technology. It's like if you were to say, oh, I don't know how to use Dante nowadays. It's pretty essential. You do kind of need to know that. And if you deny new technology like AI, then you're eventually just going to become out of date and you won't be able to get work because people who have those skills are available to do the job. So we as experienced techs need to remain open-minded and we need to remain curious. We need to look at AI and instead of saying, this AI stuff's nonsense, it'll never replace a tech. We need to say, how can this make my job easier? Now, I'm not saying I'm fantastic at that. I don't really use the AI presets on the Midas stuff and I don't even really use ChatGPT or anything for, I don't know, I haven't even thought about it. But do you know what? Now that I'm making this video, I'm going to. And I want you to as well. So leave a comment down below and let me know how you use AI in your workflow, if you do. And if you don't, what are you going to do about it? Looking forward to hearing from you. I'll leave a video up here to something else that's vaguely adjacent and useful. I've never made an AI video before, so who knows what that'll be. But until next time, goodbye.